Hey, first grade, Miss Hernan is here. We are back in week two of math. Um, this week, you got to take your very first math test, and that put all of your knowledge of graph graphing that we learned in week one to the test. We are so proud of how you did. We want you to stay motivated, keep working hard, and today we are going to dig a little bit deeper into our graphing knowledge, and we are going to talk about asking questions and answering those questions. Those two items go together. You can't really ask a question without receiving an answer, okay? So we are going to talk about how to ask a question about graphs, graphs, and how to also answer that question. Because you will be expected as first graders to be able to ask and answer questions about your data. Okay, so I have a little video that's gonna be an intro to what is a question. And this video is gonna to touch on some common question words. Now, when we talk about the graphs, those words might have another word added to it or something different, but we're just gonna gain that background knowledge to remind us what is a question word. Now that our background knowledge is activated with our question words, we're gonna add on to that and try and figure out some question words or question phrases that we can use when we're analyzing our graph, okay? Analyzing just means you're going to take a look at your data and you're going to ask questions about what you see. Before we get into that, I kinda wanna just look at the graph and we can just check out our data and see, or figure out what we notice about our graph. So earlier this week, you met with your teachers and you made a which zoo animal do you like best graph. We are going to take a look. The look we're going to take a look at the graph that Ms. Hernandez's class made, and we are going to just tell what we notice. Now, because you're not here with me, you can't share your thoughts, but I still want you to tell the screen. Tell me what you notice. What do you see? Okay. Okay. So looking at our graph, just to cut, just to review. We have the title of our graph, which is, which zoo animal do you like best? We have our data, and data means numbers. And we also have our labels, so the categories that we got to choose from, okay? Now let's review our data. 
How many people like tiger? The tigers? Zero, because there's nothing in our bar. How many people liked elephants the most? Three. One, two, three. I could either count, I could subitize, which means you just know a set without counting, or I can use my data, my bar graph, and I could transfer over and notice that the, th the red stops at the, the number three. The three elephants. I noticed that I have one lion. How many monkeys did I have? Four. One, two, three, four, or four. How many zebras? Zero. How many pandas? Now that's a lot to count. So I can just easily use the information on my graph. I notice that the pink stops here, so that tells me six pandas. Okay, now that we've looked at our, our data, let's think of some ways that we can ask questions. Now there's something very important when you're asking a question. You have to use something special when you're writing questions. Who knows what this is? If you said question mark, you are absolutely correct. You have to use a question mark when you are asking questions because then it's not a question. It will either be a statement or something where you're excited. But our questions are going to end with the punctuation question marks, okay? Now, there are a couple of words or phrases that you can use when you ask questions. The first one that I'm going to introduce you is how many. How many. How many is used when we are just trying to count. So I'm going to model my question with the phrase how many. Okay. How many elephants were liked? Now I can also answer my question, because remember, Ms. Hernandez said, if you're gonna ask a question, you also have to have the answer. So how many elephants were liked? Three. Now in first grade, we talk in full sentences. So three what? Three elephants were liked, okay? A full sentence. The next phrase that we're going to discuss is which. Now, not like Halloween, which, this one is which, W-H-I-C-H. And with this one, we can talk about two things. Which is going to be used to compare, to, to, so to take our labels and our data and see which one has the same, which one has different, or which ones are equal, okay? So when we're going to talk about which ones are the same, I can say, which two animals were equal? The same means equal. Which two animals were equal? Now this is tricky, pay attention. If you said nothing, you need to take a look again. Just because there's not a vote doesn't mean that it doesn't count. If you notice my tiger has zero, my zebra has zero. Are zero and zero equal? They sure are. So which animals were equal? Tiger and zebra were equal. Very good. We can also say, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna draw a line with my black marker because which can be used for lots of different things. And I'm going to write the phrase, has the most, and I'm going to underline that because that word is very important. Which has the most? The most means the greatest votes. Very good. So on my graph, I'm going to ask the question, which animal has the most votes. If you said panda, you are absolutely correct. The most votes were six, and that goes to panda. But I can also use, I'm gonna do another arrow, 
because which goes to different things, which has the least, or you can say fewer. Which has the least? I forgot to add my question mark. Silly Miss Fernandez. Which has the least or fewer? Fewer is another word for least. So which one has the least? What does least mean? The smallest amount. Okay, so which one has the least? Which zoo animal has the least? Well, if we're not being careful, we might say lion has the least because it only has one boat, which is true. It has the least compared to elephant, monkey, and panda. But which one really, which two really have the least? I'm gonna give you a hint. It's the one that has no votes. So tiger and zebra have the least because they have no votes. If I gave, if you either had a choice between zero ice creams or one ice cream, which one would you rather have? That one ice cream. But does zero ice cream still matter? It does because it was a choice, okay? So your zeros still matter. The next one we're gonna talk about is how many more. So we already have how many. Now this can be added to a phrase. How many more? When we say the words, how many more, that means we are comparing. Ms. Hernandez says comparing means you're trying to see what's similar and what's different. Okay? So how many more you're going to compare? What, listen to my question. How many more does the monkey have than the lion. This is where our addition and subtraction skills will come in. And we'll touch on that again in a different unit, but that's your takeaways. You're taking away. How many more does monkey have than lion? Well, if I wanted to figure that out, I would start with my lowest number and I would count up to see how many more are missing, okay? So start with my lowest number and I'm gonna count the blanks to see what is missing to reach my monkey. So one, two, three. How many more does monkey have than lion? Monkey has three more boats than lion. One, two, three. Do you see that? Three more boats, okay? On top of that, we can also add how many less. I think I did that backwards. How many less, okay? So how many less? How many less does lion have than elephant? Lion has two less than elephant, because we're comparing, we're trying to see what, what are those blanks. How many less? Lion has two less, okay? Could I also ask the question, let me think, let me think. What if I said, which, which animal has the fewest votes? Which animal has the fewest votes? If you said tiger and zebra, you're correct. Which, what if I did this? What if I added another vote? To elephant. Which animals are equal? Which animals are equal? Tiger and zebra are equal because they're both at zero, but there's another one that's equal. Elephant has four. Monkey has four. Those are equal. Do you see that? Okay, now this is what you're going to do. Ms. Hernandez is going to put a graph on Seesaw. This graph is gonna be already made. The data is already input. You don't have to create a graph. 
but you will have to ask and answer your own questions. And I am going to make you ask three questions. You can do it. You ask questions all day long. I know your parents have heard questions all day long and that's okay because we are curious beings. You are going to have to ask three questions about Ms. Hernandez's graph. Deal? Okay. Now remember, follow the directions completely because some of us have not been following all of our directions. Follow the directions, do your best. I am so excited to see what you produce and I will see you next time. Goodbye.